Hey everyone, welcome back to the Herbalist Hour. Today we have on Chloe Hurtado. Welcome to the show, Chloe. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you for being here. Yeah, uh, so Chloe and I were connected through uh, this new herb program that I found out about called uh, Ecoversity, um, which we'll go in depth in later. But uh, uh, for now, I kind of just want to get to know Chloe a bit more. We've chatted on the phone a couple times now, but uh, Chloe, how did you get introduced into the world of herbalism? Oh, the beautiful er world of herbalism. Yeah, I was first introduced um, when I was around 22 years old. I was working at a yoga studio, uh, doing some work trade, and I was pretty much wiping up the floor with my tears after a really intense breakup. Um, and inside of the, the yoga studio was a traditional Chinese medicine elixir bar with this lovely man from New Zealand who had a wealth of knowledge about TCM herbs. And he came over and patted my back and was like, oh, sweetie, open your mouth. And he dropped in a couple drops of this, this tincture, which I had never you know, seen before either. Um, I was definitely kind of concerned at first. Um, and yeah, he dropped in you know, the, a couple drops of this tincture called albizia, which is known as the heartbreak flower. And for the first moment ever, you know, within that day, I was able to take a deep breath and my anxiety settled and my heart felt a little bit softer and um, I stopped crying, was able to finally properly clean, clean the yoga studio. And that was my first exposure into the power of herbal medicine. Um, I had never witnessed something so profound, um, so deeply healing, um, so, so nurturing. And from there, um, I was hooked. Um, and it pretty much changed my life and how I how I interacted with the world. Right before this call, uh, I, I was looking for some blue vervain tincture because I do get a little nervous before these things. And all I could really find was uh, some albizia extract that uh, my friend Jesus uh -huh. made. So yeah, that was that was helpful. How did it make you feel? I think I have a very um, I don't know. How do I describe my constitution? I think I need a lot of something to feel the effects. So we're just mm -hmm. going to say that I probably feel better energetically, but I'm not necessarily noticing it. I do feel uh, in the moment right now. Um, I also did add a little bit of my St. John's work tincture to that as well, but um, 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 I'm feeling good. <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure about that's... doing the albizia, but uh, um, yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. And I love Blue Vervain too. Um, I'm a Virgo and I was listening to uh, Seja Popham's podcast on Blue Vervain. And he was like, this is a wonderful herb for Virgos because we're super analytical, yeah. very hard on ourselves. I could actually go for, for a nice tincture of that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, speaking of Blue Vervain, I've also seen Seja teach on that at the, I think it was the Brighton Bush Herbal Conference, and everything he was saying, I was like checking the box on everything. I remember, I want to say it was Seja that said uh, Blue Vervain is for people who make checklists for checklists for checklists. Like, it's just <laughs> anyone who's like always like, sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll add something to your checklist just to cross it off or whatever. Right. <laughs> I do that all the time. I make checklists once I've finished all of the projects because sometimes I get so overwhelmed with how many things I have on my list. So then as instant gratification, I make that completed checklist and scratch it up. I'm like, yeah, I did this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Um, uh, for, for those listening and watching, uh, I, I do want to recommend there's a great Blue Vervain video uh, where Seven Song teaches about it. And I want to say Matthew Wood also has a video on YouTube. So just search Seven Song or Matthew Wood Blue Vervain on YouTube. And I, I've watched that several times and I love it. But oh, yeah. um, Well, cool. Well, thanks for uh, um, sharing your story. Um, wiping the, the yoga floor with your tears. <laughs> I, kid I don't you know not. why I laughed at that. That's, that sounds sad. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, that, that breakup was truthfully the, you know, the best thing that ever happened to me because sure. it, it allowed me to get back to, back to Chloe and, and who she genuinely was as, as a woman, a young woman at the time. And, um, and it started my herbalist journey. So I have, I have deep gratitude for that experience. Amen. It is awesome. <laughs> uh, speaking of, yeah, your early herbalism experiences, do you have any early influences or mentors? Hmm. Well, I was thinking about this and it kind of, you know, indirectly related, I think that my grandpa, he was definitely someone super connected to the natural world. Um, he made, he made a soup called, uh, Becco's belly and his name is Becco. And, um, 
and it was full of like lentils and carrots and, you know, kind of a rundown of, of everything in the refrigerator. Uh, he also was a rancher and he worked on a pecan farm. And so we would go out there and harvest a whole bunch of pecans and, you know, growing up, I grew up in Las Vegas, Nevada, in the, in the Mojave Desert, um, where there's not a lot of resources, uh, where people take a lot more than what they give, um, including water and just, you know, endless, endless resources. Um, and so, you know, I definitely didn't grow up with a lot of, um, a lot of fresh food, a lot of food that um, was grown locally. Um, we definitely ate pretty well, but it was always, you know, going to my grandpa's house, he would make this super unsweet smoothie and comparatively to, you know, going out and having smoothies from, from some of the restaurants nearby. I remember being like, Papa, this isn't, a, it's warm. And, you know, it was, it was super weird. So um, I would say that my grandfather was kind of one of my f first influences um, into, you know, going out and harvesting the pecans and cracking them open and, and eating them fresh. And so that always was, was such a treat when I was growing up. And then um, I had come to uh, also one of my early influencers was Ollie from the yoga studio. He has a elixir bar called Kutuku. And, you know, he introduced me to the Albizia tincture, which definitely um, transformed my life. Uh, shortly after, I discovered Rosemary Gladstar, as every young herbalist does, and got a hold of her, uh, one of her books on, on women's health and, and kind of the reproductive system. And that was really profound um, book for me because at the time, you know, uh, lots of exposures to, you know, the pharmaceutical industry within birth control and, and really harmful, or I guess can be supportive sometimes too. But um, yeah, it was, it was different than, than, than what I had ever been exposed to growing up in Las Vegas. And so uh, Rosemary Gladstar, and then one of my first real uh, introductions to actual herbal medicine was with Seja Papam. Um, I had downloaded one of his free resources on spagyrics and thought the alchemy of that was just so beautiful. And I knew nothing about it and definitely thought that, you know, the, the process was a little, you know, little wild at the time and I was like I don't even know what he's talking about and um yeah I bought a one-way ticket to Costa Rica and landed at a farm called Punta Mono which is a, a botanical study and regenerative agriculture farm and uh I came with my little packet about spagyrics and all of the girls there were like oh this is so cool and we've been wanting to make these and we started dreaming up some ideas of how to make it actually possible at um at Punta Mona. Um, and then shortly after, within a week of me landing at Punta Mona, uh, Sarah Wu had come to teach a course on the herbalist path, um, or permaculture design for the herbalist path. And that was another deep dive into, um, into actually seeing uh, the magic of the plants growing in front of you, the process of how you can safely harvest them, and, and the alchemy of, you know, turning it into um, ingestible medicine that was safe for us to take. And, at the time of, of my arrival there, there was a, um, a mental parasite that had broken out. And so all these people believed that they had parasites um, and, and further testing had concluded that that wasn't, wasn't possible. But uh, Sarah made a big batch of what she called murder juice. And it was ombre grande and wani llama and ginger and a whole bunch of other, you know, very, very bitter herbs. And um, that definitely did some cleansing for, for all of us. And so, um, so it was pretty profound, um, pretty profound experience. And definitely uh, through that, there was no looking back into to my old life or my old ways of existing. Yeah, once you kind of cross into the herbal realm, it's hard to, to look back. I could totally relate. Um, so you studied with Sarah Wu then, huh? I'm, I'm yet to meet her in person, but uh, do you, do you know what her like herbal lineage is? I kind of want to say, I feel like she studied with seven song or do you, do you happen to know that? Um, I can't say specifically, but I do know she has studied with seven song. Uh, she um, is originally from New York and had uh, landed at Punta Mona as well um, and had lived there for over 10 years. And so she was kind of the originating village witch at Punta Mona um, and started hosting workshops with um, also a dear mentor of mine, Lala Palmerari. And uh, these two are hosting really powerful workshops here in Costa Rica, in Portugal, and Guatemala um, about permaculture, about herbalism. And um, 
and they def definitely incorporate a lot of the um, ancestral wisdom and deep reverence, you know, for the history of how how we came to know these plants um, and their safe uses for them. My cats are playing around. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, thanks for sharing that. Um, I don't know if you know this, but we list herbalism events on Herb Rally. Um, I need, I don't know if I'm signed up for Punta Mona or uh, I'm not sure which newsletter I should sign up for, but I want to stay abreast of these events that's going on over there, so, Sarah Wu specifically. So I'll, uh, I'll maybe sign up for that newsletter so I can find out about what's going on. Totally. Yeah. Unfortunately, Sarah doesn't have a newsletter and my goal is to kind of support her with with getting that going. Um, yeah. She's kind of mostly posting on Instagram, but as I see them come up, I'd be happy to to send them in. Yeah, I've been listening to Herb Rally for, you know, the last four to five years, I would say it was so, one of the first podcasts I've ever come across and it was just so accessible and so <laughs> such easy listens. Um, and then, you know, it wasn't until recently I signed up for your newsletter and I was like, oh my God, I've been missing out on all of these incredible. And so I just want to say like, that is like such an incredible resource for people um, to, to get access to. And if you haven't signed up for, for Herb Rally's newsletter, I highly recommend because you get to find out about a whole bunch of really cool events within the area. Um, and I was like seeing some in Arizona and I was like, oh, I, I'm in Colorado. I'll just drive down there for the weekend and, and yes. hang out. <laughs> Thank you, Chloe. You're hired. Um, <laughs> I uh, I love hearing that. I'll I'll never forget the first time I heard someone. I was working uh, um, at the Mountain Rose Herbs booth at the Portland Plant Medicine Gathering in Portland. No, it was the Traditional Roots Conference in Portland. And uh, someone came up to the booth or the table and said, hey, Mason, we're here because we saw this on the Herb Rally website, which just made my day you know like that's the whole point is to get people out there going to events plant walks and, and all that so uh, I didn't actually expect you to say that but that does segue nicely into the next question which <laughs> is what are some of your favorite resources uh books etc to learn herbalism mm -hmm. herb rally I would say yeah herb rally is definitely one of those resources um so wonderful to you know pop in your headphones and chop up some dinner and <laughs> and you know you have a, such a soothing voice too oh, so <laughs> <laughs> definitely enjoy that um another incredible resource that i love it is is seja papa um his resources you know there there's a lot of free resources which i love um it's it's a and he makes it super accessible uh sometimes it's super heady you know i'm like i don't even know what you're talking about here, but I love it. Um, but I love how he ties in, you know, the the um, astro herbalism, you know, the materia medicas, the constitutions, and he really finds ways of of um, telling a story so that you can remember what these herbs is, what their what the herbs messages are. And so, uh, yeah, he is one of my favorite resources. Um, when I first started. Uh, Rosemary Gladstar, her books are super accessible, and I do love those as well. Um, Learning Herbs is another wonderful resource that I love um, to just kind of follow on Instagram and, and have it pop up on my, my stories there. Um, and yeah, Sarah Wu. Um, but then also, you know, through Punta Mona and through Ecoversity, um, which we can kind of go into a little bit later. because Yeah, or, I think that's yeah. coming up yeah okay cool okay cool yeah well um, I'm, I'm really excited to talk about ecoversity because it's it's new to me and i guess it's new in general but uh um i was looking at your instagram the other day and noticed that you taught a class on smoking blends at, at the envision festival um i didn't know you had a smoking blend brand which i'm i'm really intrigued by it i'll uh this is probably very taboo but i'll occasionally smoke a cigar <laughs> which mm -hmm. tobacco is a plant i guess but uh um uh yeah so uh, herbal smoking is of interest to me um it's actually in the herb rally song um i don't know if you know, have heard that or not i heard that <laughs> i heard that um, and i was like yes <laughs> yeah. uh shout out mc calico um yeah, yeah I, I just wondered before we kind of talk about ecoversity but are you able to give us maybe like a brief quick lesson on uh herbal smoking blends 101 yeah absolutely i would love to um, so uh, Fumafolia Botanicals is, a, is my line of herbal smoking blends, and they're non-psychoactive, non-addictive uh, botanical smoking blends that you can either smoke alone, um, you can mix with, with other herbs such as tobacco or even cannabis. Um, but really, they were kind of designed for, for me to reevaluate my relationship with how I interact with specific plants. 
um, while living at Punta Mona, um, finding access to cannabis uh, was quite difficult. Um, <laughs> it was pretty expensive. And we were trying to find unique ways to be able to stretch, stretch the cannabis that we did have. And so um, Sarah Wu had taught a workshop on, on how you, uh, different herbs that are also super beneficial for smoking. And so uh, shortly after that workshop, you know, I hadn't really grounded down, you know, those ideas, but um, I uh, was cleaning the showers at Punta Mona and I had mixed um, chlorine with vinegar and that actually creates a super toxic, it creates chlorine gas. And I was inhaling it for 30 minutes and had some chemical burns on my lungs. And a dear friend uh, had brought some Mullen from, from uh, Colorado and we did a facial steam with it. And that was the one thing that was like, what, what actually made this intense pain. I, I thought I was gonna die and I was thinking that they might have to take me to the hospital. And once I did the steam of Mullen, you know, it, it, soothed, it soothed my lungs and allowed me to just kind of take some deeper breaths, which helped, you know, with the anxiety and the stress of, of those chemical burns. Um, and then later that day, we, you know, I probably shouldn't have, but I definitely wanted to, to smoke. And so I had mixed some of the mullein with, um, with the cannabis and it was a really magical experience. I think we threw in a little bit of passion flower and some uh, cacao husk. And so this was, was kind of the beginning of Fumafolia Botanicals. And so um, I had arrived in the United States and uh, was really excited because I was working at an apothecary and we didn't have herbal smoking blends. And I knew that the community in Colorado could greatly benefit from from a line of things, you know, a lot of people, you know, smoking is a way of, of bringing people together as humans, we love, we love connection. Um, and sometimes, you know, sitting and relaxing and taking a deep inhalation of, of plants and exhaling it out can allow us to relax and to have conversations and to kind of release some inhibitions. And so um, my main goal for this was to allow people to kind of revisit how, how we interact with certain plants and the why, you know, uh, for me, it's um, partial addiction. For me, it's also uh, sleep aid, appetite, increase, you know, a way to increase appetite and all these different functions. But there's also a whole bunch of wonderful, wonderful medicinal herbs that can be smoked that provide the same effects without having the psychoactive, the psychoactive implications um, from tobacco or cannabis. And so, yeah, uh, herbal smoking blend is basically um, grounded up herbs um, that are blended together with a unique formula. Um, to allow yourself to uh, create a blend that's super comprehensive. And so uh, you have your base herbs and these are herbs that are nice and fluffy, kind of stringy. These are kind of like the glue um, to the herbs or to the blends. And uh, these are things like mullein, raspberry leaf, marshmallow, mugwort, uh, motherwort, super incredible herbs. Uh, then you have your action herbs or your flavor herbs. And this is another big bulk, bulk of your smoking blend. You know, you want your herbs to taste nice when you're inhaling them because, you know, mixing that with fire can, can definitely alter the way the plant relates to you. And so these are herbs like lavender, rosemary, roses, hops. Hops is one of my favorite herbs to smoke. Um, herbs that are super terpene rich that allow you to... Um, to really taste the flavors of, of the blend. And then you have your um, astringent herbs. And these are things like uva ursi, which is also known as kinikinik, um, things like sumac, um, herbs that are super tannin rich. These herbs provide a really full bodied smoke. Um, so if you were to, I don't know if you've ever smoked mullein on its own, but it's horrific. It's pretty yeah. painful. <laughs> um, it goes straight into your throat. Yeah. It hits your throat and your lungs uh, really quickly. And then when you blow it out, there's there's typically no smoke. And so um, we really want to drive the medicine into the body. And so um, having herbs that are more full bodied, um, tannin rich, allow the smoke to be even thicker so that you can have a, a wonderful inhalation experience. And then you have your acute herbs. And so this could be something that might be your driver herb. So um, things like rosemary and mugwort and other herbs that help deliver the medicine deeper into the body. And so um, one blend that I have is called Sacral Oasis, and this is to help alleviate um, women's pain um, around that time of the month, around the time of our sacred bleed. And so this, um, this blend contains uh, the base herbs of um, 
motherwort of raspberry leaf. And then I have the flavor herbs of lavender and roses. And then I have my action herbs, which is white willow bark. And so white willow bark is a lovely herb to help with pain relief and inflammation. And so that's kind of my driver herb. And it's also um, full of tannin. So it, this helps create that fuller bodied smoke. And so there's wonderful resources online that can kind of give you a general um, overview of how to craft and formulate a really effective smoking blend in the proper ratios that you can look for. Uh, but what's beautiful about smoking herbs is that um, through the inhalation of smoke, you're breaking the blood brain barrier. And so this allows you to receive medicine within six to 10 seconds, which is a super effective way to intake medicine for very acute symptoms. Um, they can be chronic sy symptoms, but mostly acute. So, you know, my blends, I really like to focus on, um, on, on certain actions. So I have another blend called release, and this is what I call a habit relieving blend. Um, and this formula is designed for those who are ready to kind of kick their nicotine habit and substitute out um, in their in their pre-rolled or their rolled um, rolled cigarettes or joints. And so um, this this blend I really like to use when I'm having um, when I'm having a little bit of a, when I'm having a difficult time with my relationship with certain plants. And so it kind of allows me to you know, get into that ritual of, okay, you know, I'm, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to roll this beautiful joint. And I'm really going to think about the habits that I'm ready to release. Um, and then I have some really good friends who have reached out and they're like, I'm no longer smoking tobacco from your blends. Can I get a pound of it? And so <laughs> I, I like to remind them, you know, that these, these herbs, you know, you are still smoking and inhalating, you know, um, herbs. So it's incredibly important to um, find high quality herbs that you know that are grown without pesticides that are as, as organic as possible. And this is a really great opportunity to connect with local farmers because you're not only, you know, taking care of yourself and your community if you are sharing these herbs with other people, but you're also helping farmers with their, you know, with their business and, and helping share that with the community. And so, yeah, I love to love to support my local farmers. Um, and get to know them and even go and visit and see how the plants are grown and just knowing that I'm, I'm you know, accessing really important herbs that are um, as safe as possible. But there are implications of smoking. So I like to recommend, you know, that the smoking blends be used, you know, in moderation, even though they are really tasty. And once you start, once you start using them, it's kind of hard to imagine a, a joint that doesn't have them in there. So <laughs> Uh, I love your name too, Fumifolia. I'm guessing that means leaf smoke. Yeah, like smoke leaves, you know, kind That's of cool. the Latin Latin name there. And uh, alliteration. Exactly. Yeah. You mentioned alliteration a while <laughs> ago. And I was yeah. like, this is going to be great because I love to write in alliteration. <laughs> Sometimes my writing doesn't make any sense because I've just tried to match as many <laughs> L words as I can. <laughs> It's worth it. <laughs> I think it's poetic. Yeah. yeah, yeah it is. Uh, very cool. Thanks for that. Yeah. Um, uh, for those looking for a resource, I know my original herbal mentor, Howie Brownstein, maybe once or twice a year, we'll do like an online herbal smoking blend class and I could link to that. But uh, yeah, if you ever teach a class online or in person, let me know and I'll, I'll get it listed. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. Howie, Howie Bernstein was actually uh, one of the first resources that I had access to um, that provided me with a lot of information on on herbal smoking blends and how to effectively craft, you know, a nice blend for people. Very cool. Yeah, we uh, have a plant around here in the Northwest called Kinnikinnik, and I know that's a common name. So a lot of people probably have the word Kinnikinnik. I, I believe it's a Native American word for, um, I, I believe, an Uva Ursi, um, yeah. remembering correctly. And uh, yeah, he always says, uh, astringents add body to the smoke and I never forget that. So, yeah, exactly. And what's really cool about, um, Kinnikinnik or Uber Ursi is I was reading an article, um, of, of some scientific research posted by university of Washington in 2020. And they had, um, they had two pipes. One was before pre-colonial introduction, um, of tobacco in the United States or in, into, yeah, into North America. And uh, and post post colonial um, pipes, and so they tested both of, both of these pipes, and they found um, typically before they were testing for um, the metabolics, but now they were testing for the biometrics, which was allowing them to be able to figure out exactly which species of tobacco um, the original people of North America were smoking. 
or even just utilizing. And they found uh, wild sumac, kinnikinick, and uh, tobacco mixed into one of the pre-colonial pipes. And so uh, this was a really cool, cool study to read about. Um, and, and it just crazy. made me realize how important um, it is to know like kind of the lineage, lineage of these plants and their uses. And, you know, sometimes, you know, kinnikinick is in a lot of my blends um, because it's super effective and it works really well. And, you know, there's a reason why it was used so, so prevalent within North America. Very cool. Yeah, fascinating stuff. Sweet. Well, let's uh, let's jump into the ecoversity. Um, Chloe, what's the ecoversity? Yeah. So ecoversity is a super wonderful organization filled with some of the most passionate people I have ever met. Um, our main focus is um, environmental health in regenerative agriculture, in permaculture, and now herbalism. And so it's an online education center. And we first started out with um, the permaculture design course uh, featuring Stephen Brooks and Penny Livingston. And we had uh, overwhelming interest in the program. I think we're on our fourth, both fourth cohort of students who are benefiting from this course. And at the time, um, graduates would be able to come to Punta Mona and be able to directly apply the skills that they learned in the PDC course and build um, really wonderful garden beds, um, learn how to propagate, learn how to grow from seed. Um, and also the big part of, you know, permaculture is earth care and people care. And so how do we, how do we relate and support each other? And how do we come into places without without like the white savior, savior syndrome, you know, but, but really being conscious and aware of, of the need within communities and seeing how we can best benefit um, and support communities within um, what actually makes sense. And so, yeah, Ecoversity is, is a wonderful education center and I'm really excited because we've just launched a six month herbalism program uh, with Rosemary Gladstar, uh, Sarah Wu, um, Asia Dorsey, Serafina Cabranos, Paul Stamets, uh, Adriana Ellis of Anina Mundi. And so it's an incredible, like, stellar lineup of, of teachers. And what I love about this program is that it's also um, live. So every week for six months, you have live classes where you'll be able to tune in directly with your, with these system teachers and also have access to a huge community on Discord where you can interact with people within your community. Um, and also be able to meet up and go on plant walks and host, you know, herbal medicine making classes and really apply these skills within the program. Uh, yeah, a couple of thoughts there. I, I got to know. So you use a discord server as your community component. Is that, mm -hmm. is that true? Okay. How is our, yeah. how are students receiving that? Cause I feel like discord is almost more associated with like, say your techie nerd type people, but, uh, um, are people jumping in and using it and everything? Yeah, actually, um, so no disrespect. I just <laughs> no. Yeah. So, um, so I'm, you know, it's, it'll be interesting to see how, how it fully plays out, but, um, discord is definitely growing in popularity within the herbal community. Um, at the apothecary I work at in, in Denver, Colorado, we use discord to communicate with each other. And what's nice is that you can set up different channels, um, depending on the topic. And so, um, the Discord community through this herbal program will be kind of a, a, you know, similar to, you know, a Facebook group or something like that. It'll be a place where people can go in and drop questions. Um, I live in, I live in Colorado in, in North Denver. Does anyone want to go on a plant walk with me in Boulder? Okay. Um, and you can kind of drop in, drop in these uh, messages or I made a salve and it went really funky. I don't know what's going on, you know, um, <laughs> Yeah, I had a dear friend who who um, who bought some OSHA and we made a honey with it and it had spoiled within like two or three days of us making it. And so we couldn't figure it out. And it's really nice to be able to have a platform where you can drop your questions in and people can share what they've tried and what works and what doesn't work or what they're still trying to figure out maybe. Yeah, I just asked because I actually did start a Discord server for Herb Rally. I haven't used it once. I haven't shared it. Um, but I know a lot of people aren't big fans of Facebook. And so I was like, oh, maybe I'll try Discord out. But uh, um, I, yeah. I do I do love that your story almost comes full circle because you said, oh, you know, Rosemary Gladstar, early influence, Sarah Wu. And now you're like working with both of them at Ecoversity. It's a pinch me moment, truthfully. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I never thought I would have the pleasure of being able to, uh, just meet Rosemary Gladstar in person or even take a, a program with her. And, 
Um, I am a product developer for an apothecary in Denver, Colorado called Balanced Street Apothecary. And uh, I have worked closely with Ecoversity um, from, from living at Punta Mona. And so they've reached out and asked if, if the apothecary would like to be involved in the herbalism program. And so they didn't really tell me too much about it, but they were like, this is an opportunity that you don't want to miss. And I was like, <laughs> they just gave me the dates. They're like, are you available these dates? And be ready for something cool. And they were super cryptic. And I was like, I don't know what's going on. So they sent me this huge herb list and I gathered it all together. And it was an ounce of this, an ounce of that. And they were like, oh, we're going to be filming, you know, uh, the home apothecary module for the herbalism program with Rosemary Gladstar. Would you like to come on set and be the um, ingredient set provider and help us kind of curate, curate the tables and make sure that Rosemary has all of the things that she needs to be successful for the filming. And um, again, in one of those moments where I almost threw my computer across the screen <laughs> like, or across the room, I was like, what? <laughs> and so um, it was a, you know, a huge opportunity, you know, coming from a, a, an apothecary that has just opened, you know, we're just celebrated one year um, and to be able to be um, involved in a project of this level um, with people that we really believe in and resonate with. And then also being able to, create a space for Rosemary to share her legacy of, of herbal medicine. And so uh, we put together this incredible set where we reached out to a whole bunch of friends who have farms and apothecaries and, um, and just collected a whole bunch of resources to design, you know, a really beautiful set where we can really honor the recipes and the stories that Rosemary shared. And so that week was one of the most special weeks of my life because, you know, it was a very small container of people and, I just laid on the floor and just listened to Rosemary's stories. And then the minute they called cut, I'd run up on and wipe down all the oil and <laughs> refill, you know, the little, you know, the little containers and, or we would completely change the set around. And um, Rosemary was such a treat to work for. She was so compassionate and so caring and so humble and just a hoot. She's absolutely hilarious. Um, and so uh, to be able to work so closely with Rosemary and to also tie in, you know, a lot of the instructors that I've had um, huge fangirl crushes on for, for so long, like Adriana Ellis and um, Sarah Wu and Serafina Combranos, who, who is our program director for the, for the curriculum. Um, it's a, it's a, a circle of women who are very present and very grounded and very caring, and they want to make, you know, herbal knowledge accessible and and relatable and um, without these women, I don't think I would be you know, here today feeling confident enough to, to chat on Herb Rally or to make a company or to even you know, represent myself in ways. And so I feel extremely lucky to, to be part of this project because it is grown with just pure love. Like this program was, was developed with just the intention of um, really making herbal medicine accessible so that we can shift the paradigm and, and relate in different ways of how we caretake in, in for each other and for our families and in our community. Yeah, I want to say I hung out with Rosemary like 10 years ago at the Mother Earth News Fair and we were sitting on Giuseppe Spadafora's tea bus and I swear she was saying, yeah, I think I'm thinking about like retiring, you know, quote unquote, like, you know, laying low. And I, I swear she's working more now than I've ever seen her. So uh, yeah, very cool that Ecoversity got Rosemary to uh, work so closely with. And um, I haven't looked too much into the program, but you were mentioning, uh, I mean, I have, but I haven't like looked in too much into like what Rosemary specifically is teaching about. Um, but yeah, the teacher lineup besides Rosemary is incredible. Um, and I want to say in passing, you just mentioned Paul Stamets. Did I hear that correctly? <laughs> Yes, part of university? Yes. he is he'll be teaching a um a 45 minute lesson that will be in the court in the um in the course um about oh, you know mycology and mushrooms and so we're super honored to also have paul and i think the reason why this course has has developed in the way that it has is because of rosemary um mm -hmm. she is so well loved within the community and you know she was the first person who ag agreed to um be part of this this course which was you know an idea over two years ago and i don't think we all thought it would come to what it is today and rosemary had just reached out to a few of her friends asking if they wanted to be involved with the project in any way and before we knew it we had 
some of the, the most wise um, herbalists in, in the community to represent this. And, um, and also it's, it's people from all over the world, which is super incredible. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's a real, it's really special to see how it's come together. And, and the reason why it's such a yes is because Rosemary has, has created and forged so many incredible relationships over the years. And so, so loved within the community that, you know, she's a hard, hard person to say no to. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even uh, dream of that. <laughs> well, well, well put. Um, I also know that Rising Appalachia has some sort of involvement as well. I, I believe they're teaching a class as well as doing the graduation ceremony music. Did I read that correctly? <laughs> yes, yes. So we're super excited for, for Rising Appalachia. They, um, they have been uh, super involved within the herbalism community, believe it or not, and have spent uh, a lot of time here in Costa Rica working with uh, Sarah Wu and Lala and um, have even visited Punta Mona. And so, you know, they, th we've brought them on to, you know, also be able to host such a beautiful closing ceremony um, to all of our students who have worked so hard over the last six months to, to earn their certification and intake all of this knowledge. Um, and so that'll be a real treat, but also Leah, Leah Song will be teaching um, I think a couple couple workshops and I think they're kind of still finalizing what those workshops look like, but it'll definitely incorporate the folklore and the mysticism and the uh, the the poetry of, of herbalism and kind of reframing, you know, we'll be talking a lot about it'll be very information dense, very, you know, very dense with information. And so um, I imagine that her module is definitely going to lighten and lift it and allow us to incorporate, you know, the, the dance and the singing into, uh, into how we work with the herbs. They make such beautiful music. Um, bringing Rosemary Gladstar back up. I don't know if you know this, but I actually uh, co-organized the Brighton Bush Herbal Conference in 2019. Uh, and we, I believe it was uh, me asking Rosemary if she had some sort of, um, you know, connection to Rising Appalachia, and she actually was able to put us in touch, and then it just so happened that um, Rising Appalachia was going to be playing a show in Bend, Oregon, like the day after the Brighton Bush Herbal Conference, so they actually were able to stop by the Brighton Bush Herbal Conference and, and do a show for us, and that was just incredible. I know uh, they have, yeah, deep roots with the herbal community, and it's such a perfect fit for Ecoversity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they're really special women and, and have, you know, always been playing in my headphones while I'm making medicine or while I'm harvesting herbs. It's one of my, my favorite, um, favorite music groups to listen to as I begin to start, you know, grounding down and in, in, in designing, you know, the formulas that I want to make for, for my community. So, um, yeah, very Amen. beautiful. I love it. So I also saw that Sabande Greer is one of your instructors at Ecoversity. Um, I believe you just hosted a webinar. Um, we're actually going to be interviewing her in the next month or so on the Herbal Herbalist Hour. So we're super excited for that. Uh, but I believe the webinar has since passed. Um, and now you have some sort of online summit. Yeah, coming. but we have another exciting opportunity coming up for those who are interested. Um, we're going to be hosting a online community summit with uh, Rosemary Gladstar, Serafina Cambrano, Stephen Brooks, Asia Dorsey, Sarah Wu, a, a whole beautiful lineup. And it's called Remembering the Plant Path. Um, and then we also have a special guest, which is super awesome um, because it's definitely someone we talked about today. <laughs> um, but the, uh, the Herbal Summit is going to be on Saturday, March 25th, around 9 a.m. to 2 and we're going to be unveiling the wonders of herbalism with the world's most foremost experts. Um, it's a donation-based webinar, so all of the proceeds are going to United Plant Savers. So it's a really good opportunity to meet some of the instructors that are in Ecoversity's online certification program. Um, we'll be doing an opening ceremony. We'll be talking about the way of the rose with Serafina Cambranos, which I'm super excited about. Um, leads and wonders of leads of wonder in the backyard with Rosemary Gladstar. Ethics for Herbalists with Sarah Wu. We'll also be talking about people's medicine and the bio remedy of environmental racism with Asia Dorsey. And then Regenerative Herbal Panel with Stephen Brooks and our surprise guest. And I'll also be hosting this, this particular webinar. So I'm super excited to, to introduce you know, some of my dear, dear friends and teachers and, and all of you to this wonderful program. That's so cool. You're gonna do a wonderful job hosting. <laughs> thank you thank you well that sounds super exciting so one more time that's march 25th right 
yeah, March 25th, depending on where you're at for, for, I think me in Colorado, it's around 9 a.m., but we will be sure to include the website on, on the show notes here. That's right. Uh, very cool. Well, uh, um, just a few more questions here. If you got the time, yeah. um, I have to know, did you meet Zach Efron? <laughs> No, unfortunately, I didn't get to meet Zach oh, Afron. Yeah. He um, he had come to Punta Mona about a year and a half, maybe two years before I had gotten to Punta Mona. Um, but funny enough, I had I was one of the first groups that was welcomed back to Punta Mona after COVID um, had shut things down, and so we were definitely still amidst the full full COVID thing. But I remember being on a boat, and I was with all these young women and they were like, do you guys think Zach Afron's going to be here? And I was so confused. I was like, why would Zach Afron be here? And then, <laughs> you know, I asked them, like, why do, why do you guys keep talking about Zach Afron? And they were like, oh, that he just filmed a documentary here, blah, blah, blah. And I hadn't even, you know, heard about Down to Earth. And so um, definitely the first thing I did when I got into the bedroom at Punta Mona was try to download or try to stream uh, the Netflix show and unfortunately didn't get to watch any of it um, until several months after living at Punta Mona and man that was such a treat to be able to tune in and watch and see some of our goober community on screen and you know <laughs> and 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 his um, you know his his experience at Punta Mona was was definitely very similar to like how I first showed up, everyone was playing volleyball on the beach and all these people come up and start hugging you. And there's all these different natural odors in the air and <laughs> smell in my arm, like my arm and I've got armpit all over it, you know, from being hugged. So yeah, I didn't get to meet Zach Afron, but I'm, I'm sure his world got, got rocked up. <laughs> That's so cool. And yeah, I think uh, what Steven gave him a tour around the property, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. want to check out that episode, but I I just love when you know like our community gets highlighted in mainstream culture, and I think that's really cool. It's featured in Net, a Netflix original series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really awesome to see, and it definitely in, uh, increased the um, interest in Punta Mona. A lot of people, all of a sudden, you know, it went from being this you know low key farm on the Caribbean coast to having thousands of emails coming through and that's when I kind of stepped in and started to support Punta Mono in hospitality and being able to you know create programs that would allow all of these folks to come and stay without impacting our community or or the land in too many ways and so we made it work and it was really awesome and it it it, it gave exposure to a new way of living for a lot of people who were looking for something like that who knew that they were feeling a little lost or um a little bit like an outsider within their communities. And then they saw that episode and they were like, I, I got to get out there. And I've gotten the pleasure to meet so many of those people and the way that they've transformed their lives and, and, um, and have, you know, changed the course of, of how they exist. It's pretty incredible to see. Love it. Uh, this wasn't on my list, but I'm going to ask it anyways. I'm, I'm curious because it sounds like you know, you were getting into herbalism and now you find yourself in kind of this pinch me moment job with ecoversity and all that. And I'm just kind of curious, did you have a very specific vision that you were working towards? Do you feel like you kind of fell into it with, you know, we like to use the word luck and all that. Uh, sometimes I think maybe we create our own luck in some ways, but um, uh, are you manifesting this? Are you trying to, uh, you know, it, are you kind of living out the vision you had for yourself? Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for asking. You know, I was I was talking to a friend yesterday, and um, I was telling her about you know this opportunity, and she was like, "Chloe, this is something that you've been dreaming. Not exactly this exact way it's unfolded, but this is something that you have been dreaming and creating for yourself over four years ago." And you know, I had I had talked to her about you know. How do I how do I celebrate myself right now? Because it's an interesting um, feeling to be sitting here right now and, and involved with such a beautiful organization and being able to work with some of my my dear mentors and people I look up to so much and have the support of of launching a new business and feeling a little bit more confidence in that. And um, I will say that it was a lot of of sitting with my intentions every single day of, of just knowing that there was an overall vision of 
I wanted to live, you know, in a beautiful place with with kind people who were like me, um, having access to growing my own food, because that's something I never thought would happen after growing up in Las Vegas. And mm -hmm. um, it took a lot of of failure, you know, a lot of putting myself in in different places that you know, putting myself out there, whether that was, you know, having conversations with people or working for organizations that were within my values, but maybe not necessarily the, you know, the motivator, you know, and I drive off of a lot of motivation and inspiration. And I love to put everything that I can into what I do. And that can sometimes be what kicks you in the butt too, if you're putting it into places that don't, don't fully serve you. And so there was a lot of, you know, a lot of that, a lot of, um, of you know course correcting and going back to the to the drawing board and, and um i had you know i had thought that i wanted you know a big girl job and i wanted to i knew i wanted to work remote i knew i wanted to work for an organization that was in my values um and i would put myself in in situations with really big companies um and ultimately you know didn't didn't make the cut essentially and would kind of be sad for a little bit, but know that, you know, this is a test and this is going to just get me closer to uh, what I'm actually looking for. And um, when you operate from your heart and when you care deeply about the things that you do, it's hard for that to be overlooked. And so um, it happened to to get into the eyesight of, of the people at Ecoversity of some dear friends of mine. And um, we definitely love to operate with passion. And so when you have so much passion for what you do, you, um, it's almost contagious and it kind of snowballs off of each other. And so um, I got lucky and, and it involves taking risks and involves, you know, booking a one-way ticket to the place that you've never been to before uh, with maybe, you know, and that's the classic story. I had no money and I bought a one-way <laughs> ticket and I landed in this place. But truthfully, if you really allow yourself to just surrender to these experiences and to relate with others and talk about what you've been going through, um, there's so much you know, not just healing, but there's so much growth that can happen from that. And, um, and yeah, being very clear with your vision and knowing that you are going to get kicked down, um, and sure you can pick yourself back up, but, you know, picking yourself back up with those lessons and, and incorporating those in so that you can get even closer, closer to the goal. Nice. Yeah. Good answer. I love hearing that. Um, I always recommend, uh, this uh video called the strangest secret by earl nightingale he's kind of like the godfather of self-help um it's incredibly outdated so if you do uh youtube search this um you know disregard some of the language used but basically <laughs> it, it was one of the early influences i had as far as like finally um setting a goal and then kind of navigating towards it and uh um yeah i don't know whatever you said just there just kind of reminded me of that and um mm -hmm. yeah thanks for sharing i love hearing yeah. that yeah yeah i have to look into that it sounds cool yeah I definitely do um it, it sounds like you're kind of already on your path i kind of listened to that when i was a lot more lost but again if you do listen to it just know that they're going to use 1950s uh <laughs> perhaps overly religious language uh that might turn some people off uh yeah but, no judgment of my character but still no uh, totally <laughs> my caveats out of the way um yeah cool um yeah i'm also curious uh what is one thing you do daily to practice your herbal craft well i would say the one thing that i bring daily that incorporates my herbal craft is is the first cup of tea that i make in the morning um, I've had the privilege of being at my dear friend's farm here in, in Costa Rica, and she has a beautiful medicinal herb garden filled with all of the herbs that I could ever dream of. And so every morning I would go out and just harvest enough to make a couple couple cups of tea for all of us. And um, we have some some hardworking farmer friends who, you know, may not tap into the the herbal world as much. And so um after a long day of work you know either yeah, after a long day of work you know we'll, we'll make a cup of passion flower and uh some tilo a little bit of oregano and rosemary and um and you can kind of see them all start to relax but yeah waking up in the morning and having a fresh cup of tea is is my favorite way of of, of starting the day and also practicing herbalism and it's as little as you know a simple infant 
um, which can really just bring so much light and joy into your day and allow yourself to to go in with a little bit more intention. And so that that morning cup of tea is is definitely the foundations of of a good day for me. Amen. <laughs> All right, two more questions, and uh, as I told you, we got these a uh, this there's a uh, game. Uh, it's called uh, Let's Get Deep Friends Edition. And so what I want to do is choose a random card and you're going to answer it. <laughs> uh, I went through these uh, I went through these with my daughter last night and Amanda. Uh, she she was kind of the, the final judge on these. And we chose th this amount of questions that were like seemed appropriate. So they're just random. They might be like, what's your favorite food? But it's just to get to know Chloe a little bit better. So Please. I'll just I'll just choose a random card. Awesome. And you I'll guys answer. still have a, what's that? Yeah, yeah. You guys have a solid deck there. That's that you guys were able to pull some good questions. It looks yeah, like. it's actually a pretty big box. So it came with a bunch of them. So oh. um, these, yeah. And oh. you'll answer one with me, right? Yeah, but my answer to this one's kind of boring. Uh <laughs> answer is just no. But uh, uh have you ever been in close proximity to a dangerous wild animal? Which one and where? Oh. You've never been you've never been near <sighs> I mean, if I, I mean, maybe a, a, a wildcat and didn't know it, but um, <laughs> I can't say that I've ever specifically seen one close and been, have been afraid. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Well, this, this actually just recently happened. Um, I was in, uh, where was I? I was in California outside of Yosemite um, at Virginia Lakes, and we had just finished this epic hike, um, beautiful, beautiful hike. And we were about to crack open a can of, of sardines and we're sitting there and we're watching this bald eagle flying over the lake there. And I had never seen a bald eagle before. And I was just amazed. It was giant. And so we're literally, you know, fingers are on the nozzle there. We're about to crack open this thing. And there's a little rustle in the trees next to us. And I was like, ha ha, squirrel. And my boyfriend looks at me and he's like, that's not, a, that's a squirrel doesn't make a sound like that. And I kid you not, from about three feet away from us is this probably juvenile grizzly bear. And he just looks at us and just stares oh at us God. for a moment. And we just were, you know, our breath <laughs> left our bodies and we were just like, be very still. And then he starts to move, you know, towards the lake a little bit. And, and I was like, hi, bear. And then he stopped again and looked over and my boyfriend was like, don't talk, you know? <laughs> and so um, luckily enough, he, the bear had had entered the water and was giving himself a nice little bath. And that was so cute and so cool to watch. Uh, we definitely slowly backed up, you know, way to give it some space. But I'm sure if we would have cracked open those sardines about five minutes earlier, it would have been a different story for us. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, that's that's crazy. See, I, I I can't say I've ever had an experience like that. You said Yosemite and I we were at a um Yellowstone. Uh where was it? Yeah, we saw a whole herd of bison crossing the river. That was cool. And I'm I'm guessing they're probably dangerous, but they weren't close to us. So um, but yeah, no, that's a uh, um that's a that's quite the experience you had. <laughs> yeah, it's funny too because we we actually ended up getting that whole experience on video on accident. Um, and so we were able oh. to watch back and, and, and see that. And, and my, my par parents were definitely very concerned. Um, like, <laughs> you can never hike again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were just in Joshua tree, uh, California and Amanda was doing some video and photographs, uh, you know, out there and, um, she crossed paths with three coyotes, uh, which then she just sprinted away. Uh, but we were later told that, uh, that they're not that harmful or dangerous and and uh it, we were actually told it was a good omen for the rest of our trip but um oh yeah i didn't I see them love... amanda saw it was face to face with them <laughs> that could be pretty scary i do think yeah. that they are a little bit more docile as long as their like cubs aren't around but um and and yeah just kind of being strong and barking back a little bit that yeah. might might scare them off a little bit but yeah, in, in Las Vegas, we have lots of coyotes, and it's always a concern, you know, to keep your cats nice and safe from the coyotes because yeah. they'll they'll come right into your neighborhood. They'll be right on your front porch. Sometimes they're they're pretty bold. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Um. All right. Well, last uh, question before we kind of wrap up here. Um, what is your favorite part of being an herbalist, and what's your big why that keeps you learning and growing? 
Mm. My favorite part about being an herbalist is how it connects me back to the earth and it keeps me super grounded. Um, I do think I'm, I'm a spiritual person, but herbalism and, and practicing herbal medicine is a way of, of really grounding down my spirituality and to making it actual, um, actually worthwhile. And so I love to be able to support my community um, through certain things, you know, now, now I have you know, after working at an apothecary, um, I get a lot of beautiful people who walk into the space with different struggles or different experiences that they're having a hard time to deal with. And, um, you know, we're not, we're not prescribing or recommending anything. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're able to help support our community um, through certain things like a heartbreak, you know, that's something that was very close to me and um, being able to have a girl come in and be like, I'm, I'm really struggling right now, you know, what, what could benefit me and whether that's a sit bath or a cup of tea, or just having the space to be able to talk to someone who has also gone through these struggles, um, and being able to connect it back to the natural world is something super important. And, um, you know, I'm really fortunate to be able to work at an apothecary where we do get a lot of people who come in um, and share their experiences and their vulnerability and find it to be a safe space to be able to talk about things that they might not otherwise be able to talk about with their friends or with their family. And, um, and they don't even know what you're doing, you know, sometimes I'll just, you know, be talking to them and they'll be telling me a little bit about them and I'll think of an herb and I'll throw that in and then, I, or I think of a formula and before I know it, I've made this cup of tea and we're still talking and they're drinking it and they have no idea, but then, you know, they're able to open up even further and, and kind of get a little bit closer to the source. And so, yeah, herbalism is a wonderful way to help, you know, support your community um, with, you know, acute, acute things that can be really debilitating for, for us in, in this world. And also, um, yeah, that's a big, big reason why I love to do what I do. I love it. Well, thank you for sharing. And thanks for your time today, Chloe. Um, so we definitely want to link to you, uh, uh, ecoversity.com, right? Yes. Yeah. So ecoversity.com, we have um, enrollment for the herbalism program closes on April 19th. So there's still plenty of time to, um, to enroll in the course. And if you're interested, um, I also have a special offer available for the Herb Rally community. Oh, so sweet. we would love to love to support you guys. If you're interested in taking the program, you know, we've got a treat for you here at Herb Rally. You can use the code Herb Rally to get 5% off of the program. It's a beautiful, beautiful program. And you can also book one-on-one -on -one calls with some of our trained herbalists who can help guide you into seeing if this program is right for you. You can awesome. also find um, the Herbal Smoking Blends at Fumafolia on Instagram or at fumafoliabotanicals.com. Awesome. Yeah, I, I haven't seen the website yet, but I, I definitely want to follow you on Instagram for sure. Well, uh, thanks so much, Chloe, for joining me today, and uh, we'll see you all on the next Herbalist Hour. Thank you so much, Mason. It was such a treat to be here. <laughs>